Hey, this is EVS Jams here. I wanted to comment and make a response to the uh, Nightline debate on Does God Exist between the Rational Response Squad and the Way of the Master, guys. Uh, this is a response to Part 6. And in probably their most objective and sound argument for God's existence, Kirk Cameron and Ray Comfort used a creation creator might call it a watchmaker argument. An issue that I have with their method is that they don't clearly state the law of causality or the simple rationality of cause and effect. They simply explain that this world needed a creator. The way something complex and containing information needs a creator. A true argument, but it left open some doors that the Rational Response Squad stormed in on and they caused a little bit of a struggle for Ray and Kirk. Uh, the Rational Response Squad later countered that if everything needs a, a creator, then who or what created God? God can't be exempt from this supposed rule, can he? When the way of the Master guys say that God is eternal, the Rational Response Squad's Kelly says, then why can't the universe be eternal? In effect, you claim your eternal thing, and I'll claim mine. Uh, Ray and Kirk seemed puzzled at this, and they didn't know how to respond, and that kind of frustrated me, because there are good responses. So the argument accurately portrayed is not that everything needs a cause, but that everything that begins to exist needs a cause, or that all finite things need a cause, or all temporary things need a cause. And the universe falls into each of these categories, so it needs a cause. God, as described by Christianity, does not fall into these categories and does not need a cause. If all things really need a cause, then we fall into an infinite regress, an infinite number of past causes and effects. Uh, Kirk is right on when he says that the buck has to stop somewhere. Because if something has to traverse an infinite sequence of things, then by definition of infinity, it would never be traversed. Other evidences that could have been used to demonstrate that the universe is not infinitely old. Uh, one is Big Bang cosmology. Everything is expanding outward, meaning it was all condensed into a point of spaceless dimension. In other words, it didn't exist. Uh, two is spiral galaxies. They appear fairly young, since they're still spirals, though they're tending outward. Three, consider the burning of stars. Uh, given enough time, stars will burn out. They've been burning a finite amount of time. Uh, Brian of the Rational Response Squad, he uses thermodynamics as his reason for arguing that the universe must be eternal when he says that matter or energy can't be created or destroyed. He doesn't mention that this applies to a closed system though. and He doesn't apply the other laws of thermodynamics. It's true that nobody or nothing within the system is able to add to the total amount of energy or matter. Inside a perfectly sealed glass box new stuff will not start forming and the heat and energy will eventually diminish to an unusable state. Picture a cup of hot coffee and some bouncy balls inside our closed system, the perfectly sealed and stationary glass box. When you walk up to the box, you see the coffee steaming and the balls bouncing a little bit. Upon examining the box, you should be able to determine that the contents in the box were applied a short time ago. If the box had always been there with no outside interference, well, you first of all wouldn't expect to see balls or coffee inside it. But for the sake of our analogy, let's say it's in there, now you'd expect the balls to be perfectly still and the coffee to be the same temperature as the rest of the box. Contrast that scenario with what we see in the universe. Extreme temperature differences and a lot of movement. Energy was applied to the system at some point in the past. Applied to Brian's worldview, 
there ought to be no potential energy. And that's granting that stars and elements can be there by some eternal necessity. So to summarize, one, taken in its fullness, thermodynamics is more detrimental to the rational response squad's theory than helpful. Two, the universe is a terrible candidate for being eternal. And three, there must be a first cause that doesn't need a cause, and this is consistent with the Christian God.